Just Call Me Boats, part two of how to change head gaskets on your Kohler 23 horsepower V-twin engine. Welcome back to the video. Welcome back to the channel. Let's get back to the repair. Now we're all set to lift this up and then just kind of set it out of, out of the way. Okay, we're back. Uh, battery went dead on me. So, okay. Uh, got the carburetor, linkages and everything else uh, set up here. Also, need to get yourself a couple of clean rags and shove them down the intake holes so you don't get any dirt or debris down in there while you're working on this. Um, let's get these uh, this bolt out and uh, let's go from there. Now some guys don't like having these uh, plates on and I, at first I didn't understand why the manufacturer put these on here. But when you think about how this engine is designed, it really makes sense. Now this engine is air cooled as you know. and. Uh, that's a big fan sitting on top of that engine. It's not only your flywheel and your, your timing gear, basically, and everything else. It's also a big fan, and that fan moves cooling air across the cylinder heads and the block. And um, if you have these plates in place, like they're supposed to, that keeps the air concentrated inside inside these cooling fins so it takes away as much heat as possible. If you remove those, well then you have reduced your cooling capacity for your engine. Well, let's get these valve covers off and uh, let's see what we've got underneath. I do not want to break off one of these. These are shoulder bolts. So you want to make sure that you don't break those off. <laughs> off it comes. Whew. That had me scared for a minute. It really, really did. Okay. Well, it doesn't look too bad in there. Pretty clean. Wow. And I lost the gasket here. That comes off in one piece, and yes. I don't know how it goes back on. So if you have that pop off, just be gentle. It goes right back into this little groove here. I'm going to have to clean this up before I put it back together. Oh, it looks like it's a little stretched out. I may have to seek out a new one. Well, let's set that aside for now. 
back to back. Now that I've got the four nuts off the top of the head and uh, we're ready to pull the head off and let's see oh, got a mess forming that down here hold on just a second yeah have rags on hand just just in case because you know you're opening up the engine so let's take a look inside this and see what we see Okay. Oh, look at that. That is nasty. And uh, well, you can see where the head gasket's partially blown out there. Let's, let's get that off of there and let's take a look at it. Right? That's where it's blown out, though. I don't know if you can see that crack right there, but. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's where it's that's where it failed right there. See that crack in that? That's a little divot. And uh, you can see the difference between the factory original style uh, head gasket versus um, what I showed you earlier that came in that parts kit. Now, in order to clean up the surfaces. You're gonna to need to grab a Scotch Brite, just a regular old Scotch Brite. You're only gonna need a a small portion of that, and uh, just to get in here and just kind of clean up the surfaces. You're just gonna rub lightly, and that stuff will come right off of there. You can also add. A little bit of uh, carbon choke cleaner or brake cleaner to help um, clean up that uh, residue off of the uh, cylinder head and the block itself and uh, well we'll be right back um, with the reassembly now the reason why I have my tractor sitting up on these uh, car ramps with this engine setup, this is this uh, these are hydraulic lifters, and uh, they're fairly easy to pop out. Matter of fact, when uh, I was pulling out the push rods, uh, the bottom lifter wanted to come with it. Um, you want to keep this engine tilted to keep as much oil as inside the engine as you can. Um, if you have it sitting down on level ground, the oil is just going to constantly run out from here. And when you put this all back together, this has to be absolutely oil uh, residue free. It's got to be totally clean. Otherwise, um, you're going to have problems with the head gasket again later on down the road. And this isn't a horrible uh, teardown, but it's bad enough that you don't want to have to do it more than once uh, five, every five years <laughs> I'm guessing um, okay let's get on to the head and get that cleaned up and um, get this side reassembled okay we're gonna get started on uh, number two cylinder here um, I know that you guys didn't get to see a whole lot that what I was doing on the other side because camera angles and such. But this side here, uh, the camera is pointed right out, right at the cylinder head, so you get a bird's eye view of what's going on. Uh, first, we're going to pull this guard back here, and uh, that is, let's see, where is it? Is it down here? Yeah, that's a 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom, and. A seven millimeter up on the side here. Well, because I can't get to the bolt over here on this side, um, I'm just going to push that back out of the way. Um, I know that I'll be paying dearly for it later on, but that's the way it is. 
Um, let me throw this over here. Now you're going to want to have an old rag there um, underneath because when you crack that head loose, um, oil is going to come out. And not that it matters on my dirty tractor. Uh, and I will be power washing this when this is all done. Um, let's go ahead and get these uh, this valve cover off. Again, eight millimeter. Be careful when you break these loose. You don't want to have them snap off into the head. Just kind of go easy on them. Oh, that one was kind of loose. And there's a good possibility uh, some oil will come out of this valve cover when you get it off. Um, so I'll have a rag handy to catch that. Okay, that one's still in there pretty tight. Okay. It's the last one of those. that a lot I gotta stop doing that the gasket has stuck to the cylinder head and has pulled free from the valve cover Let's see if I can get it off here without stretching it Because these are the factory originals um, and they're quite old, I'm going to be replacing those um, on both sides because, just because. <laughs> um, okay, now you, a whole bunch of crud all around these. down in there okay uh, now I'm going to take the rocker arms off um, the nice thing about this engine is these are hydraulic lifters not mechanical so uh, you can just put them right back on there and tighten them right down you don't have to set a valve lash or anything like that um, you do have to be a little careful when you take the um, push rods out because the lifter wants to come with it. So you just have to be careful on that respect. Now we're all set to pull the head off. Um, like I said, it's just the four bolts, or excuse me, four nuts, and uh, that thing will come right off of there. Again, you don't really want to have to, you know, don't yank on these too bad, just kind of steady pressure until they break loose.
Now the reason why I took the rockers off is so it was easier to uh, gain access to those nuts and it's going to have to come apart anyway because they stay on the cylinder head and the push rods stay in the block. So to prevent anything from falling on the dirty floor, I'm just taking it apart this way. Okay, give it a little tug and off it comes. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, you can see where it's been burning oil too. And can't really see here yet. Let's set this aside. And let's get the head gasket off there. Let's see where it let go at. nice to see cross hatching in the cylinder still ah I see it it's in the same exact spot same exact spot on both gaskets right where that vacuum goes right goes back up to the intake manifold So you just take your scotch bright, just keep going around there trying to you know, get as much as you can off of there. You know. All right, we're back. Battery went dead on my camera. So, as you can see, uh, I got the surfaces all clean. Those are just stains, it's nothing, nothing there. Um, I cleaned up the uh, cylinder head area uh, around the uh, valves and stuff. I'm gonna be putting these spark plugs in this. Uh, Got to go out and get them this afternoon, but uh, yeah, put this back down. There. So I, I see I still have a little bit of carbon left in there. I don't know that I can get any more out of there. Like just yeah, that's not going. That's not taking any out, and uh, neither is this. So. That's all cleaned up. This is all cleaned up over here. The engine's all cleaned up. And uh, so we're ready to uh, put, put the uh, head back on the engine. Let me get the head gasket. Again, like I said before, you need two of these. Again, when you put this in, you want to make sure that these numbers are facing out and this metal banding here, the reinforcement is facing in. Uh, let me try to adjust you guys here so you can see what you're doing. What I'm doing, I'm gonna to want to take some of your cleaner and uh, spray a rag there, spray it into a rag and you're gonna to want to wipe off all your mating surfaces here make sure that they're clean oil free and you want to do the same thing on the cylinder head you just want to uh, go over that real quick and make sure that there's no oil or dirt residue anything like that left over okay 
gasket with the numbers out. You want to put that over your alignment pins, make sure it sits up over those. And then you're all set to put your cylinder head back on. Get your four new nuts and washers out of your, out of your kit. Make sure you put the washers back on. And once again, I'm going to refer to your instruction sheet. Fold this here so we can see it. Now, in the instruction sheet, they have cylinder number one and cylinder number two. Obviously, this is cylinder number two. You're going to follow this sequence when tightening down your bolts. Excuse me, your nuts. Okay, I'm just going to use my impact to just kind of snug them up. Now, I'm going to go to the torque wrench and then set that for 12 and a half foot pounds. Okay, now, now that that's done, let's go to 26 and a quarter. That sequence is done. Now, let's go to this. I'm gonna reinstall the push rods. Make sure that they're seated in there in the right spot. They're not off center or anything like that. It's kind of hard to mess them up, honestly, but there's a will, there's a way. Okay, now these are just shoulder bolts. They you just run them all the way down tight. As I said before, these are hydraulic lifters. There's no setting the valves or any of that. Just tighten it down and the lifters do the rest. Now you don't want to go crazy on this. You're just going to make sure that it's snug. Now I know probably somewhere there's a torque spec on that. Um, I was not able to locate one. Uh, so just make sure you have it kind of snug down. It doesn't have to be, you know, gorilla tight, but it does have to be tight. You don't want that coming loose when the engine's running, especially if, if you're you know, running full throttle with your uh, mower deck running or whatever piece of gear you have on it at the time. Okay, here we are, day two. Uh, I was waiting for parts to come in and here they are guys. Two brand new valve cover seals. Now what you're gonna wanna need, uh, order when if you have to replace yours and then if you're doing this repair, I would recommend you go ahead and order these. Uh, I've found them for about 30 bucks. And uh, you say that's quite a bit of money. And yeah, 
it might be for these two little rubber seals, but um, it's better than discovering an oil leak after you've done all that work. So here's the part numbers you're gonna need. You can freeze that frame to get that part number. And uh, I gotta get to work. My grass is getting really tall and uh, I gotta get that mower deck put on that tractor and get to cutting grass. Let's get back to the repair. Okay, when we last uh, left off with this repair, I was waiting for the seals for the valve covers and those are in, as you already know. So let's get these uh, valve covers taken back off and get the new seals put on. And uh, I'll show you how that's done. Just a second. Okay, first of all, you're gonna wanna make sure this is clean and dry. Um, see, I put that on there temporarily and oil leaked all over it. I did have it nice and clean, but uh, well, that is the way it is. So make sure there's no debris down in that channel, no dirt, no anything down in there. Matter of fact, I'm going to spray this with a little carb cleaner to uh, make sure that it's oil free and you need to make sure that it's clean on, on the inside you don't want any debris or dirt or anything inside this because this is part of your engine and yes you have an oil filter but it's not designed to remove those big chunks of stuff like that it'll do a whole lot of damage on its way down to that filter so, you got it clean and dry. Take your new seal, and without dropping it, you lay it on there, like so. Make sure you got the right side up. Nope. Make sure you got the right side up. The little nubs should go down, and they should lock right into that track. You push it in. You may have to kind of stretch it just a little bit to get it to lock in there. Just kind of push it down in place. Just work it, work it, work it until it sits down in there flat. And then you're all set to go. Put this on and uh, torque it down. Now these are plastic valve covers. So when you're torquing the bolts down, don't overdo it. One, you could snap a bolt off into the head which is, would be a very expensive mistake. Secondly, you could crack the plastic valve cover. And that isn't the worst thing that you could possibly do, but you wanna do this repair. Well, at least you, if you're attempting this repair on your own, the whole purpose of it is to try to save money or maybe you don't know anybody that does these kind of repairs and you'd like to try it yourself well there's no point in adding extra expense so the whole goal is is to do it without costing an arm and a leg You just want to snug them down. You don't want to over torque them. And 
And that's it. That side's done. Well, guys, here's the moment of truth. Is it fixed? Or is it not? No more anything. Thanks for watching part two of how to change the head gaskets on your Kohler 23 horsepower V twin. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It tells YouTube that I'm doing a good job. Please subscribe and please hit that bell icon so that you know when my next video is posted. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, thanks for watching. Just call me Boats.